All have that all have thy mind must be adhered to with respect to COVID-19. You are to wash your hands before you enter the church. Your face mask must be worn. Please continue to maintain social distancing. Switch all phones on silence, and if you are unable to do so, please switch them off. There is still no eating, nor chewing of gum inside of the church. As we prepare to welcome our parish priest, Father Jason Flinders in worship, I invite you to stand as we sing our entrance hymn, O Creator, number 180 in the new and 162 in the old.
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be always with you. My dear friends, we gather today on the 15th Sunday of Ordinary Time, and we hear the Lord inviting us to open our hearts, to ready our hearts, to make our hearts plowable and pliable so that the Word of God may, be, may find a rich soil upon which it can grow. The Lord reminds us, this people, this nation's heart has grown coarse. They are afraid to open their eyes lest they see, to open their ears lest they hear, and understand and perceive and be converted by me and be healed. My dear friends, let us humble ourselves and ask God for the grace that we may be able to see him, and for the grace that we may be able to hear him, and for the grace that all hearts need to be touched and come to the units of life. Let us turn to God and ask him for mercy and compassion. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And the Almighty God of mercy in us, may He forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen.
We offer this Mass today for those who celebrate their birthdays. For Doreen Chinslick, for Ian Patterson, and for uh, Secretary Julie. We pray that God, and, and for Jeremiah Bernard, we ask God's grace and blessings to come down upon them from the source of this celebration today. We pray for those who are sick. We continue to pray for our sister Joan. We ask that God's grace and mercy would be with us and that she may experience God's saving help and God's healing presence. And we pray for the report of the soul of Jonathan Thomas. We trust him to God's merciful love and ask that God will grant him life, refreshment, and peace. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path. Give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns between the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Oh, uh -huh. 
but that us can form to the Roman. I think that what we suffer in this life can never be compared to the glory as yet unrevealed, which is waiting for us. The whole creation is eagerly waiting for God to reveal his son. It was not for any fault on the part of creation that it was made unable to succeed in its purpose. It was made to by God. But creation still receives the hope of being free, like us, from its slavery to decadence, to enjoy the same freedom and glory as the children of God. From the beginning till now, the entire creation, as we know, has been groaning in one great act of living grace. And not only creation, but all of us who possess the first fruit of the Spirit. We too groan inwardly as we wait for our bodies to be set free. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. left the house and sat by the lakeside. But such crowds gathered round him that he got into a boat and sat there. The people stood on the beach and he told them many things in parables. He said, imagine a sower going out to sow. As he sowed, some seeds fell on the edge of the path and the birds came and ate them out. Others fell on part of the rock, where they found little soil and sprang up straight away, because there was no depth of earth. But as soon as the sun came up, they were scorched, and not having any roots, they withered away. Others fell on rich soil and produced their crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Listen, anyone who has ears. Then the disciples went up to him and asked, Why do you talk to them in parables? Because, he replied, the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven are revealed to you, but they are not revealed to them, for anyone who has will be given more, and he will have more than enough. But from anyone who has not, even what he has, will be taken away. The reason I talk to them in parables is that they look without seeing and listen without hearing or understanding. So in their case, this prophecy of Isaiah is being fulfilled. You will listen and listen again, but not understand. See and see again, but not perceive. For the heart of this nation has grown coarse. Their ears are dull of hearing, and they have shut their eyes. For fear that they should see their eyes with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their heart, and be converted and be healed by me. 
But happy are your eyes because they see, your ears because they hear. I tell you solemnly, many prophets and holy men long to see what you see and never saw it, to hear what you hear and never heard it. You therefore are to hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of God without understanding, the evil one comes and carries off what was sown in his heart. This is the man who received the seed on the edge of the path. The one who received it on the patches of rock is the man who hears the word and welcomes it at once with joy, but he has no root in him. He does not last. Let some trial come or some persecution on account of the word, and he falls away at once. The one who received the seed in thoughts is the man who hears the word, but worries of this world and the lure of riches choke the word, and so he produces nothing. And the one who received the seed in rich soil is the man who hears the word and understands it. He is the one who yields the harvest and produces now a hundredfold, now sixty, now thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When we were children, we were all very hardy. Huh? Not so? Because when you look like you were good hardy. <laughs> you look like you were one miserable child, Castle. Hmm? We were all hardy. Never, never liked to listen. Huh? And we did our own thing. And we did our own thing in a, in, a, in a way, in spite of all the instructions, all the commands, all the cautions that our parents would have given us. You know, we still did our own thing. That's all. In a real sense, the text today reminds us that very often we refuse to listen. A refusal to listen. To listen to that word of the Lord. So Jesus, as you remember last week, Jesus is trying to preach to God, to, to, to the people, the kingdom of God. But he's not making much success. Nobody is taking him on. People are doing all kinds of things. And Jesus is trying different strategies. He's trying different strategies so that he can, he can reach them. So he, so he said, in the, in the thing, I play slow music and you're dancing. I play fast music and you're still dancing. All kinds of genres and you're not dancing. You ain't doing nothing. So he's trying different strategies so that he can reach them. He's looking for the correct wavelength. The correct wavelength so that he might be able to communicate with them. Because he recognizes that they are difficult people. That very often, when you, something is being repeated over and over, it sounds like a cliche. It sounds like a cliche, and it doesn't have the impact that it should have to bring one to a place where their eyes may be open, that they may be able to see. And so Jesus decides to use another strategy. Those other strategies that he tries seem not to be working. And so he tries another strategy. This strategy is one in which he speaks in parables. He speaks in parables. And a parable is a story in which an unexpected punchline grabs us. But it's a story that we have to engage. It's a story that we have to enter into. It's a story that we have to grapple with. That it, it is not just telling us everything, but one in which we have to do some critical thinking and reflection. That's the purpose of the parable, so that, so that it may break into the hearts and into the minds whereby it becomes closed, becomes uh, cliched, and, and not able to hear the newness of what Jesus is saying. You know, in the, 
the, on the 20th of August for the C exam, he said the, 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 the new format would be one of problem solving for the maths. So no, no longer I just have to be giving you a mechanical equation or, or something to do. But now, problem solving appears reading the problem, understanding it, writing all this, writing all that, huh? and then being able to answer. So you need to, then in the, the child, God save them, I think that, that exam had another doctorate. The, the child then has to enter into, in, into a, a different world of, of understanding and grappling with the problems that are ever before them, that is presented, uh, that are presented. So, it is so that it becomes more engaging, the problem solving methodology or strategy. Jesus uses this to see if he can get through to these people. And so he tells them a parable. And he says that in the parable, of course, a, seed, a sower goes out to sow his seeds. And as he sows the seeds, some fell on the path, some fell on some thin soil, some fell and amongst weeds, and some fell and grew up. And Jesus left the parable there for them. Now, what does that mean? They will ask themselves, what do I mean? What does parable mean? So you have to now think about it. And that's the problem that has happened to us in this age. That we no longer think. We no longer spend time thinking and reflecting. Thinking and reflecting about our lives. Thinking and reflecting about, about what is the purpose of our lives. Thinking and reflecting where God is leading me. Thinking and reflecting so that our hearts might be open to the wisdom of God and to the Spirit of God. We are always in a frenzy, in a rat race, running helter skelter. Huh? Thank God, one of the good things of COVID-19 is that it has shown us that many of the things we thought were necessary and, and we had to do that we can in fact not do and still breathe. Huh? Tell me. Tell, tell me that's not your experience as well. Many of the things that you felt, I have to do this, I have to do that, I have to do that, and you're running around helter skelter, you can try and stop. And that's important for us. And we must lose that. We must be reminded of that. And Jesus wants the disciples to understand that. And so he speaks to them in parables. So that so that they will not easily get it because they, their minds are closed. But you know, when somebody make up their mind that they're not listening to you, you could, you could preach until the throat bus. They listen to you. They're not listening to you. And you can do, there's nothing you can do. Jesus could come, they're a concern. They make up their mind and they close their hearts. And this is what Jesus is saying to this people. To so these people, their hearts have grown coarse. Their hearts have grown coarse. No longer are they open to the word of God. No longer are they open to hearing what the Lord is saying. No longer are they open to, to transforming their lives. They don't want to see and they don't want to hear. It's like sometimes, you know, um, people going to the doctor. You say, I prefer not to go to the doctor. Because if I go to the doctor, the doctor might tell me something wrong with me and then I have to deal with that. Huh? So the best thing is not to go. That's what Jesus is saying. So these people refuse to open their eyes because they are afraid. If they open their eyes and they do see, if they open their ears and they do hear, then they will be forced to come to a place of conversion and repentance and healing. But they're not ready for that yet. They're not ready for that. They're quite comfortable where they are. They're quite comfortable doing whatever they are doing. And so Jesus says, the real challenge is the seeds that fell on the side. And he said the birds come and ate them up. And the seeds that fell in the in the, in the thin soil. 
roots couldn't go down deeply. And the seeds that fell on the, amongst the weeds. And so Jesus now explains this, this parable to the disciples. He says, to you, I will explain, but not to them, because their hearts are already open. The disciples' hearts are already open. They have already opened their hearts to us, so they can now see. They have opened their hearts so they, and ears so they can now hear. They have opened their hearts so that they can understand and perceive. So Jesus explains it to them. So that, so that they may be able to grow because they want to. He explains it to them because they want to. They have already made that decision. And he said to them, the seeds that falls on the path are the seeds in which very often you go uh, and you go to church and you may hear a word of God and recommit yourself you know, to, to following the way of the Lord. And then evil one comes and snatches that word before anything can happen. The evil one comes and snatches that word. So we play. Huh? We play. You play holy. Huh? Rem and, and reminds you all the bad things you did in your former days. Huh? All the bad things. You, are you stupid or that body doing nothing for you? Uh, what, what, what are you trying? Huh? You remember, you remember you did this and you remember you did that and you remember you did the other? And the evil one plays with our mind. He, he allows us to remember all the, the things that we did in the past and all the reasons why we should not follow the Lord. Look at them priests. Look at them priests and them. You want to follow? You want to listen to them? Huh? You make a joke. All the negative things. The evil one plays with our mind. The text tells us the evil one snatches the word. He snatches the word. And, and and therefore, that, 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 the power of that word to germinate in the heart of dies. And then the second, the, the seed that falls on thin soil, it starts to grow, but it, its roots cannot go down. And so Jesus says, these are people who receive the word with joy. They are happy they have received it. Huh? They're happy, they've experienced, they've experienced God's life. It's like you, you, you go to you do a life in the spirit seminar, or you do a, a you go to the charismatic conference, or Jesus explosion, or a core retreat, and you come out with fire, you're, you're fired up, and you're happy and you're going, energized. And then something happens, and then all of a sudden. All energy, all joy, all enthusiasm dies. Because the roots are not going down deeply enough. It is not about just the emotional high. It is not just about the experience. The experience means nothing if the experience does not lead us into a deeper relationship with Jesus. And if we don't nurture that experience so that we may be able to grow out of that experience. It is about the growth. So the experience just initiates us into the process of growth that we would need to undergo. And so we then have to ensure that there is growth. All right? A plant, a plant needs, needs certain basic things. Huh? You know when you when you were in primary school you get a seed and you put the seed in a cotton wool and then every morning you have to go and measure how much growth that took place to see how much how this how how tall it, the seed grew. But then you have variables. You know, you put one in darkness, you put one in soil and one without water and you see what are the conditions necessary for growth. So you need water, you need light, you need nutrients. Likewise for us as Christians, we do need the same thing. But then, but then it's almost like some magic. We think that, okay, I baptize this child and this child is just going to be grown. This child is just going to become a Christian just so. I don't bring the child to church. I don't teach the child to pray. I don't teach the child right from wrong. I don't, I don't allow the child to know who Jesus is. I don't read no Bible story to the child before the child goes to sleep. 
The child has no knowledge of God, but I expect by some way for the one when Father throws his water on this child this morning, that this child is going to be all holy. You dream and dream on again. It takes my heart. Parents and godparents, you have that responsibility of nurturing that child. Like a, that child is like a, a, a plant. You have to nurture and, and ensure that that child has all that he needs so that he might be able to grow and blossom into the beautiful uh, plant that the Lord wants that child to grow into. And likewise, Jesus says, if we don't do that, then the, the roots don't go down deeply enough. The roots don't go down deeply enough. And, and, and when the difficult times come, when the troubles come, easily, bam, the child is not rooted enough to stand in the midst of difficulties. And, and that's important. You know, that's important. You must have, something must be poured into you. Something must be there within you. Parents, you know, when I was at the seminary, when I was at the seminary, I remember, I began to remember a lot of the things my grandmother was, um, was telling me, or used to tell me, or used to go through. And I, I heard, began to hear again in my mind, and for a minute, like, guys, I'm, 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 I'm becoming like my grandmother now. Huh? What are you doing? Well, that's because she had something to say. No, nobody ain't tell you nothing, and ain't give you that foundation, and ain't give you that grounding. Then you have nothing to fall back on. You, know? you have nothing to fall back on. There is no foundation of right from wrong. Yeah, sometimes all of us stray a bit and we go off course and so on, but then we come to our senses, we realize that this is making sense. Because we have a foundation, we have a foundation, there's a ground, but if the roots don't go down deeply, and there's no, there's no, no, no foundation, there's no soil to, for the roots to go down, then when, that, when the difficulties and the temptations of life come about, then it will easily the child will easily be learned, especially in this culture, because we're no longer living in a Christian culture. We are no longer living in a Christian culture. We're living in a pagan culture. We're living in an anti-Christian culture. And so, unless there is that clear sense of identity and formation, then I, I dare say, my dear friends, you have to hope for the best. But we can more than hope for the best. If we do what is necessary, Jesus indeed would allow God's grace to be operated. And then you had the soil, the, 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 the seeds that fell on a good soil, and it started to grow. But then the cares of the world began to choke it. The cares of the world. You know when you run a health skeleton, you know how to bring any money, so we've got a little time, I don't time to church, huh? Now to work today, I don't work today. No, 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 I can't be, I can't live that. And then next week I'll go to church. No, no, next thing I'll go to church. Next thing I'll go to church. And then a year pass, a year go to church. And what happens? Because you're running helter skelter and you're not making a, a priority for God. You're not making a priority to, to pray. You're not making a priority to read your word, the Bible. You're not making that a priority in your life. And, and, and that's how the, how the weeds of life will choke out the gospel and the word of God. It chokes it, so then it suffocates it. You know, if you have a garden, I'm not a gardener, I, 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 anything I plant is dying immediately. But if you have a garden and you plant, you know, you have to weed around it and so on to ensure that the weeds don't suck out the nutrients and so on, and, and it has sunlight and, and, and all of that. Huh? But if you don't do that, then it will die. It will die. And so we have to ensure that the, 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 the right conditions are present. And we, we, we must ask ourselves, what kind of soil is my heart? And that's an important question to ask ourselves. If the word of God is in my heart, is it a, a, a heart that 
The soil is thin. Is it a, a heart in which the word of God falls on the path? Is it a heart that is filled with all kinds of weeds? Or is it a heart that God's word can germinate and bear much fruit? A hundredfold, sixtyfold, thirtyfold. My dear friends, God's word has a power of its own. And we have to trust in God's word. Jesus was not deterred by the fact that people were taking him on. He continued to proclaim the message, sowing the, the, the seed and, and knowing that the, the, the grace of God in some mysterious way by the power of the Holy Spirit will cause hearts and minds to come to God. And we too have a trust in the grace of Almighty God and the power of God. So today as we come before the Lord, we are challenged. We are challenged to find the right wavelength to meet this generation. To meet the iGens and Generation X and, and, and how, how do we find the language? How do we find the right wavelength? How do we find the right words to reach this generation so that they may be able to see they may be able to hear, and they may be able to come to conversion of heart and mind. That's a challenge for our age, as it is a challenge for every age. That's a challenge for our age. And we must reflect and pray that God will inspire us with that wisdom to bring them into that relationship with Almighty God. And so we pray that God will indeed open our eyes, open our ears, and open our hearts that we might see, that we might hear, that we might understand, that we might allow ourselves to be converted and healed and come to be disciples of Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. My dear friends, let us now stand as we profess our faith with the parents and God parents of this of uh, this child that is going to be baptized. Giovanni. Giovanni, come on. Giovanni, you see us see here. Janabi. Dear parents and godparents, you have come here to present this child for baptism by water and the Holy Spirit. He is to receive the gift of new life from God with love. On our part, you must make it your constant care to bring him up in the practice of the faith. See that the divine life that God gives him is kept safe from the poison of sin to grow always stronger in his heart. If your faith makes you ready to accept this responsibility, Renew now the vows of your own baptism. Reject sin. Profess your faith in Christ Jesus. This is the faith of the church. This is the faith in which the child is about to be baptized. My dear friends, do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? Do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? Do you reject Satan, the father of sin and the prince of darkness? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. So we go to the back to the back. Bring it ready. No, no, no. Put it together. Parents and God parents, is it your will that Janami should be baptized in the faith of the church which you have which we have all professed with you? Somebody hold the baby. Janami, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That we may allow God's will to empower us 
and free us to live as children of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for those who are struggling with addiction, that they may recognize their need for God and be open to support that others can offer. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for all healthcare workers, that God will give them strength as they care for the sick. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray as we find in a special way for uh, young people who are preparing for exams. We lift them up before Almighty God. We pray that God's grace will be with them. That God will open their eyes, their ears, and their minds. That they may be able to see, to hear, and understand all that is before them. That they may be able to do well and be successful in their exams. We ask, O Lord God, that your Holy Spirit will come down upon them and fill their hearts and minds and open them, Lord, so that they will know and do your will and do all that is necessary to be successful in their exams. Lord, hear us. Lord, For those who celebrate their birthdays, we lift them up before Almighty God, Lorraine Chinslick, Jeremiah Bernal, Ian Patterson, Julie Fuentes, we give God thanks for the gift of their lives and we ask God's blessings upon them. We pray that God in his merciful love will continue to strengthen them each day and grant them the newness of life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the report of the soul of Jonathan Thomas. We trust him to God's mercy and God's love. Eternal rest, grant unto Jonathan, O oh Lord. And let the light shine upon him. And may rest in peace. Amen. For those who are sick and suffering, we lift them up before Almighty God, and we ask that God's grace and mercy will ever be with them to grant them healing and wholeness. We pray in a special way for our sister Auntie Joan. We pray that God's grace and mercies will continue to be with her, that God will grant her new strength and grace, that He will continue to sustain her and grant her His healing mercies. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We make all our prayers in the name of Christ Jesus, and we ask in the session of Our Lady as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is to be. Blessed are thou amongst men, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Please be seated. We now have the offertory, and uh, sorry, we now have the collection to be taken up and. Um, or stewardship. Our communion hymn is not in the hymn now, but I know most of you all will sing along. Open the eyes of my heart.
and of my sacrifice and yours can be acceptable to God, your Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes a prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to be the thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, to Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought the new earth of humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering cancelled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, and without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, So that they may come for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you.
There is still a way where he suffered a method and took the chalice. In one small giving times, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Jason our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Jonathan Thomas, whom you have called from this world to your side. Grant that you, as united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. Now the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints of the Lord of Ages, we may merit to be poet in the life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, you may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, said the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will. You live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. 
the Lord who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who the supper of the Lamb. May the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Brothers and sisters, please wait patiently as a member of the hospitality team will direct you from the pew to the to our liberated minister. Just before you join the line, lower your mask away from your nose and mouth, then sanitize your hands. You are welcome to use your own alcohol based sanitizer or the one provided. Do not touch your face or mask again until after receiving Holy Communion. When lining up, Keep six feet behind the person ahead of you. When standing opposite the Eucharistic minister, maintain a six foot distance when responding to the the invitation. To receive Holy Communion, extend your arms forward fully with the elbow straight, left hand in the right hand with the palm flat. Allow the Eucharistic minister space enough to extend his or her arm toward you such that you are standing two arms length apart. Receive Holy Communion in your palm, then place it in your mouth. You may now adjust your mask to cover your nose and mouth as you return to your seat along the designated aisle.
Let us pray. Having consumed this death, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, the saving effects upon us may grow to Christ our Lord. To be seated, we have the post back to my right first before the announcement. I will pray. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has freed you from sin, given you a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit. 
and welcomed him into God's holy people. He now anoints with the, the prism of salvation, as Christ was anointed priest, prophet, and king. So may you live always as a member of his body, sharing everlasting life. And as you have become a new creation and have clothed yourself in Christ, see in this white garment the outward sign of your Christian dignity. With your family and friends to help you by word and example, bring that dignity unstained into everlasting life of heaven. Receive the life of Christ. Parents and God parents, this life is entrusted to you to be kept burning brightly. This child of yours has been enlightened by Christ. He is to walk always as a child of light. May he keep the flame of faith alive in his heart. When the Lord comes, May you go out and meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. To Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 <laughs> the Lord Jesus made a death here and now speak. He may soon touch your ears to receive the word and your mouth to proclaim his faith the praise and glory of God the Father. As a pastor, the Lord will open your eyes and open your lips, but you may hear the word of God. Thank you. 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 To the Holy Roman Catholic Church and the Church of the Incarnation. Right? And, I, and I invite you to pray in a special way with the Navi as a medical problem. Let's just stretch forth our hands upon and let's just ask the Holy Spirit to come down upon him through this baptism that he may experience God's healing and that he may have everything according to God's will, so that he may have a successful. Uh, surgery and everything will go according to God's plan and every obstacle in the way that the borders will be open so that he may be able to, to fly out and, and everything will go according to God's plan and God's will.
Good morning again, brothers and sisters. There will be a second collection taken out for St. Vincent de Paul. Today, Sunday, the 12th of July, at 2.30 p.m., there will be an altar service meeting from the three communities right here at the Church of the Incarnation. With effect from today, the 12th of July, the distribution of Holy Communion to the sick and shuttings resume, and this will be done on the second and fourth Sunday of every month. On Saturday, the 18th of July, right here at the Church of the Incarnation, there will be an important meeting of the Heart of the Ministry right here at the Church of the Incarnation at 10.30 a.m. All team leaders and members, please take note. And there's a call on the youth and conservation candidates, all the silver, and all interested parties. You are all welcome to join this meeting. Come and share your feedback, issues, concerns, and suggestions on the way forward. Do we have anyone here celebrating Mass with us for the first time? I invite you to stand so we can welcome you.
Heavenly Father, we want to give you thanks for these our children and for the preparation that they have made for their exam, for all the hard work that they have put in. Lord God, we pray that their hard work will bear much fruit as they prepare to sit exams. Lord, let your Holy Spirit come down upon them and bless them. May they be granted peace of heart and peace of mind. Take away all anxiety from them. Take away all care. Anything that they seek to be a distraction. Lord, give them the grace that they may be focused in their exams. Lord, allow them to recall all that they have studied and all that they have done. Give them the grace to make right decisions and, and, and choose right options. Lord, and guide them and lead them so that they may be successful in this endeavor. We place, Lord God, this task before them. And we ask, oh Lord God, that you would be with them. Make them know that you are with them so that they may be filled with confidence and they may be filled with your grace. We ask God's blessing upon them and in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All the best and successes in your exam. God bless you. Let's stand for the final event. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And the Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This our celebration has come to an end. Let us bring peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, our recessional hymn is number 209 and the hymn is Freedom Song. Give that to me.